Hi and welcome to my studio. I've been enjoying experimenting with intuitive art techniques lately and I thought I'd put together a quick tutorial using the simplest of all scribble mazes. Something you probably remember from primary school but that are great fun to revisit as an art adult. Before I start I want to give you a peek at some of the pieces of intuitive or what I like to call med meditation art. It doesn't matter what method or materials are used, the relaxing and surprising nature is the same. It's a great way to bring us back to the present moment and let go, allowing what wants to appear to appear. Our brains dislike abstracts, so when given random scribbles, splotches, droops, etc, it tends to see things in the shapes made. This can be fun to see what shows up for you. Having said that, it can also just be about the process and not looking for things in it. So one of the things I recently found was something called NeuroArt. And if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you would have seen some of these posted. So I started doing a lot of these not so much colouring in, colouring them in, but the line work. I just love, love, love doing the line work. It is so relaxing. So this is one that I coloured in, and I loved how this. I see it as a lion, but anyway, you could see it differently. But that popped up, and this one. I loved how there was, I, I feel there's a parrot there and even something up here could be another lion. So we also explored, you know, as I said, just doing line work. So I've done some on in different colours. And the great thing here was you can use thick lines, you can use thin lines. You can start with shapes and build out, build out with with line work. Another one, that's one done on some watercolor background. One of my first colored ones, and then as I said, I just got took to doing the line work. So I've done tons and tons and tons of these. Which one I tried a different color. This one I think to me is a field of flowers some more flowers another one popped up there and I just colored it in but I just love the relaxing nature of drawing lines and then rounding off the edges to create these beautiful tile like patterns some are simple a lot of these I start from a scribble maze and then I come in and I do the edges of the corner all the corners okay so lots and lots there but then I also started experimenting with things like splotches and seeing what pops up in the splotches. I thought there was like a bit of a dragon there. And I, I just love how just the simple, even the simple addition of a circle or a dot can make it appear to be a figure of some kind or a creature of some kind. So that one's just a simple splotch doodles over the top of the splotches and around the splotches then I came across someone on YouTube called Gerda Lipsky and she does these most amazing paintings with alcohol ink uh, not sorry alcohol alcohol drops on wet paint so I started to give that a go and then, and also um, plastic wrap on wet paint and what the shapes that that brings up. So I've done it 
some of these. I love the blob on walls that came up on this one there and some figures there I thought praying figure anyway I just just having so much fun experimenting with this and my latest one is a larger one on canvas I don't even know if I'll finish it but I'll, I'll see how I go and I've recently started experimenting with watercolors and these are some of the thing, some of the watercolor pieces that have come up. Elephants seem to be popping up a lot, and I just loved this one. Looks like a dolphin with the world and a heart. And this one, and the thing with them is you can turn them around in all different directions, and you'll get a different perspective. And different things will pop out. So here we go, a scribble maze. The thing with a scribble maze is it's just something really fun to do anytime with anything you've got on hand. What I've got here and that I'm going to show show you is um, on copy paper, just 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 ordinary printer paper, and. You can use you can use a pencil, a biro, markers, anything you like, anything, pretty much whatever you have on hand. I, I would suggest if you're going to use a marker like a sharpie, and I do use a sharpie a lot. Um, remember that it's going to bleed through, especially on this thinner copy paper. So you've got your paper. And you've got your marker of some kind and it's just a matter of starting from somewhere and moving your hand and I would say vary your marks if you find you're doing a lot of twirls like I am put in some lines some some straighter lines so that your shapes are varied and just enjoy the flow. And the thing with it is, you can do it if you want some different variety. You can do it with your your non-dominant hand, and your non-dominant hand will tend to give you different shapes, and go in a different direction than you would normally do with your conscious mind. Oh, already seeing like an eagle there. So just enjoy yourself, enjoy the flow. You can go fast. Or you can go slow as I was doing with the other ones. And the idea is that you're just letting go and you're letting your hand and the marker, whatever you've, you've got in your hand making the mark, just flowing and just relaxing. So now you've made you've made a couple of pieces. What do you do then? Well, you can leave it as it is, as a bit of a cathartic experience, or you could start to notice that there's some shapes there. Got a heart, and we've got you turn it round. And I feel that 
that's a while. And the shapes don't even have to be anything. You're just pulling out some shapes to, for colouring in. And you'll notice too that I'm not actually completely following the pencil line. I'm just letting my hand follow where it wants to. That bird. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have inspired you to give this a go and see what might show up for you. Bye for now.